this is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though it is wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio, then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel might now do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness, yet that this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet, if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs in their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There is something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Must you with hot irons burn out both mine eyes? And will you? Have you the heart? When your head did but ache, I knit my handkerchief about your brow. The best I had, a princess, wrought at me. And I did never ask at you again. And with my hand at midnight held your head, and like the watchful minutes to the hour, still and anon sheared up the heavy time, saying, What lack you? Or where lies your grief? Or what good love may I perform for you? Many a poor man's son would have lain still, and ne'er have spoke a loving word to you. But you, at your sick service, had a prince. Nay, you may call my love crafty love and call it cunning. Do. And if you will, if heaven be pleased that you must use me ill, why then you must. Will you put out mine eyes? These eyes that never did nor never shall so much as frown on you. And if an angel should have come to me and told me Hubert should put out mine eyes, I would not have believed him. No tongue but Hubert's. Oh, save me, Hubert, save me. My eyes are out even with the fierce looks of these bloody men.